Hello. Today we'll talk about fear of being outside for puppies. Lots of puppies are scared of being outside. If you carried out your puppy's passive socialization in due time and your dog ended up being completely relaxed when going outside, that's great. But let's consider you lucky because around 50% of puppies get very scared during their first walk because they're used to the conditions of the house or apartment where everything is familiar, where it's dry and comfortable, while outside there may be many external stimuli. There may be rain, it might be too hot or too cold, there may be too many people, cars driving, dogs running, etc. So the puppy might get very scared when they go outside. So what do you do in this case? It's very important to keep going outside every day two or three times a day. Despite the rain, wind, snow, hot weather, it's necessary to walk outside. Take the most delicious treats with you. It can even be something that's not too healthy. We can even say something like caviar or champagne for a dog to offer it something super delicious. It is best to go outside when your puppy's hungry. And we have, for example, a pancake or a caramelized steak cut into small pieces. Take your dog's most favorite toys as well. It's very important not to change the route of the walk. Don't try to increase the distance or introduce new routes right away. You can go out and make your way around the building every day. Just walk around the building three times a day. Slowly, the puppy will get used to the route and start reacting to the smells, the ground, etc. Don't be lazy and write down what you want your ideal walks to look like how the dog should behave, what it should look like. So, for example, you want your dog to be walking with a straight back, with their tail up, ears up or forward, to be interested in all the smells, to look around, to be ready to eat the food you offer, to play with you, interact with you, and follow your commands. It's best to make an actual list. If you have a list in front of you, it's easier for you and it's easier for the brain to differentiate the signals your dog is projecting. This means that, for example, when you see that your dog straighten their back, you can even praise them. Every time you praise your puppy, make sure also to offer something tasty. It is likely that if your puppy is afraid of being outside, they'll refuse food, but please make sure that you have delicious treats with you every time you go for a walk. At a certain moment in time, a miracle will happen. Your puppy will be more or less used to being outside. They'll hear your voice. You always offer your puppy something really, really tasty, and there'll come a time when your puppy actually accepts this treat. For you, this should be a signal that your puppy is not afraid as before. For your puppy, a treat is reinforcement of a decreasing fear. So the puppy's getting more comfortable because it's not as scared as it used to be. Plus, the puppy gets a treat, and this is your way of reinforcing the fact that it's not as scary anymore. And of course, as we've already mentioned before, food calms the dog's nervous system. So every time that you see your puppy is doing something that you have on your ideal walk list, for example, they have a straightened back, a straight up tail, or just a tail that's not pressed to the dogs behind, straight up ears, whatever. Maybe your puppy looks around, decides to sniff the ground. Every time in such a moment, mark this behavior using the marker of good behavior and offer your puppy a treat. Additionally, before going outside, it's very important to consolidate the simplest commands such as nose, which is touching your palm with the nose, a visual search command, find it, the shoo shoo game, or left spin, right spin, and weave. So before going outside, teach your puppy and consolidate their knowledge of the simplest commands, for which they'll get a huge amount of treats. These commands are simple and your puppy will get into liking them very quickly. These commands are connected to always getting something delicious after following them. You're pretty much forming anchors lifelines that you use to help your dog in case they're afraid. It means that if your puppy is scared, you can ask them to follow the nose command because this command is connected to good memories and you use these good memories and emotions to shift your puppy's attention from scary streets to your trusted hands. This is your puppy's contact with you. 
and here it's likely that a behavioral pattern will form. I touch my owner's palm with my nose and the owner feeds me for doing so. It's great if your puppy accepts a treat. You'll also come to notice that when you use one and the same root, that there are certain parts of that root that the puppy considers the safest. Your dog might go potty or start smelling the ground in such places. Let's say we know there are three places along the route where the puppy is ready to smell the grass or the ground or the remains of another dog's urine. It means that these three places are your dog's safety islands. You can use these safety islands as a basis where you can start playing. Play the shoo shoo game, the nose game, ask the puppy for left spin, right spin, or weave. You can use any commands that your puppy knows well and likes. You can take clothes that smell like home and place them along the route around the building. These will be the clothes that are familiar to your puppy. When your dog stands on them, they'll probably start smelling them, pretty much showing curiosity and initiative. And curiosity and initiative are in conflict with fear. They're mutually exclusive phenomena. And as soon as the puppy starts smelling the towel from home, let them do so. The puppy will be smelling it outside and you'll get a chance to use a behavioral pattern to praise the dog. Most importantly, please don't give up and don't abandon the idea of walking outside. If we tell ourselves it's raining today and my puppy doesn't like going outside anyway, so let's just skip one day, progress will be almost non-existent and tackling this problem will be hard and will take a long time. Usually if we walk our puppy three times a day, the fear subsides in seven to 10 days. And there's another thing that's very important. Under no circumstances can you start walking back home if your puppy is pulling you home. So while the puppy is pulling, and ideally we're using a harness, and while they're trying to run home, you should stop and wait. Fear is just like any other emotion. It comes in waves and there will always be a low point after a peak. You will understand that a low point is happening because the puppy will suddenly stop trying to run home, they will stop shivering, and can even turn and look at you. This means that the emotion is now lower in intensity. The puppy is very receptive at this moment. They can hear you. At this moment, you need to praise them, offer a treat, and start moving towards home again. It's common for puppies with a very strong fear to make one step and then start running again. The most important thing is not to give in to the provocation and not to walk in the direction of home when the puppy is pulling on the leash. This way you'll be teaching your puppy that in order to get home as soon as possible, they need to pull. You need to walk home under the conditions that you establish yourself. We will walk home only when you're calmly walking. Please be prepared that if you see such behavior in your puppy at the beginning, you will need a lot of time to walk home, 20 or 30 minutes. And this is if we're talking about simply walking around the building. It is important to keep yourself cool, to not get nervous and worried. It's normal. The most important thing is to keep insisting on your demands. If you're concise and understandable and behave in the same way a hundred times out of a hundred, then your dog's behavior will start changing starting with the fourth or fifth day. So gather up all your patience. We tend to be empathetic and when we see that our puppy is uncomfortable outside, we want to help. But the only way we can really help is by helping the puppy overcome those fears.